the next lesser number of electrons in the out. First question, the grade below represent part of the periodic table, studied and answer the questions that follow. The letters do not represent the actual symbols of the element. So this part of a uh, periodic table representing a number of elements. You have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. So the first question is state the elements that can form ions with a charge one negative, then we are being told to give a reason for answer. So now we understand that from the periodic table, elements either lose or gain electron or electrons to form stable ions. So now, uh, because of the charge being negative, it means that uh, there is an electron that has been gained. There is an electron that has been gained. So uh, it is a non-metal, uh, a non-metal that has gained, that gains, non-metals are the one that gain electrons. So now, being that has gained one, it means that now, group seven are the ones that gain one electron to form a stable ion. So now, from our periodic table, the letters that represent uh, uh, group seven elements or the halogens, we have H and I. So now, these are halogens that form their ions by gaining an electron hence increasing the negative charge. Remember now, uh, number of electrons and, and uh, protons are equal, which makes an atom to be neutral. But now here we have gained an electron which is negatively charged, hence increase in the negative charge. Then, what type of structure exists in the oxide of A? Then we are being told to give a reason for our answer oxide of A. Remember this now A is in alkali metal. It's a group 1. So A forms a stable ion by losing. By losing. So it is an oxide. So now two atoms of A will be required to react to form an oxide. So it is an ionic structure. So this compound is an ionic compound. It is because A has only one electron in its outermost shell or outermost energy level and oxygen is short of two electrons to gain a fulfilled octet state. Hence, two A atoms will donate the electron to oxygen to form ionic bonds. So, it is an ionic structure. It is an ionic structure. Next question, how does the reactivity of I compare with that of H? I compare with that of H. Remember now, I and H are in the same group. Are in the same group. So now, the reaction, reactivity in a group, it either increases down the group or decreases down the group. So now, uh, in halogens, the reactivity decreases down the group. This is because of our uh, increased number of energy levels. Remember now, as you are moving down the group, there is an addition of uh, there is an addition of an occupied energy level. So H is more reactive compared to I, for in this group, the activity decreases down the group due to increase in atomic radius down the group. So you are saying as we move down the group, there is an increased number of energy levels because uh, for example, we have the first one being fluorine that has nine electrons. Then as we move down, there is an increase because a number of electrons are increasing. So as they are increasing, we also have an extra energy level. For example, fluorine has two energy levels. The second one has three energy levels. The oxygen of D has a low melting point than the oxygen of element C. So looking at here, D is a non-metal. 
D is a non-metal, then C is a metal. Precisely, D is a carbon, then C is a calcium, then C is a calcium. So now, uh, oxide of C, it is an ionic compound. And then ionic compound are formed when there is a transfer of electron from one atom to another. So now, calcium loses two electrons that now are gained by the, ox the, the oxygen. That are gained by the oxygen. So now ionic compounds are formed when electrostatic attraction form between opposite charged ions, as in the case of oxygen and C. So these attractions are strong and so require large amount of energy to break. So uh, compared to the oxide of D, which has a low melting point, as it is a simple molecular gas consisting of D and oxygen atoms that are covalently bonded together, but they are held by weak intermolecular forces. So that's what makes C to have higher melting point compared to D. Then, with a reason, choose the most electropositive element. The most electropositive element. So, the most electropositive element are the elements in group 1. That is A. So, the group 1 elements are the most electropositive elements of the periodic table. Then, electronegative element. So, group 1 are the most electropositive. Then now, Group 7 are the most electronegative group 7. But now, we remember we said that a, a reactivity decreases down the group. So now H is the most electronegative element. But now in the entire group, fluorine will be the most electronegative element. So halogens are the most electronegative atoms, with fluorine being the smallest halogen, it has the highest electronegativity has the highest electronegativity of all the elements and electronegativity decreases as you move down the group so just the way as the reactivity is decreasing also the electronegativity decreases down the group compare the atomic radius of b and h atomic radius of b and h so one you have to remember that B and H are all in the third period of the periodic table. So they have equal number. They have equal number of field energy levels. But now the difference comes in, the difference comes in uh, the last energy level, the number of, uh, of electrons in the last energy level are different. For example, now in B, we have two electrons in the outermost energy level. Then in H, we have seven electrons in the outermost energy level. So these are elements in period three of the periodic table, where the atomic radius increases as one moves from left to right. Hence, B has a smaller radius compared to H. Hence, B has a smaller radius compared to H. Because uh, the, the lesser number in the outermost energy, the less, less number of electrons in the outermost energy level, the more the attraction between that uh, the outer energy level and the preceding one. So now, because uh, H has seven electrons, there is a less attraction between the last and the preceding energy level. But because now B has only two electrons, which will have more attraction. To the preceding energy level has making it to be a smaller radius compared to that of H. Compare the atomic radius of D and E. D and E. So now D and E are all in the same group. D and E are all in the same group. And what you have to remember is that the atomic radius increases down the group because as you are moving from uh, down the group, there is an extra energy level that is being created, an extra energy level that is being created. So now, D has a smaller radius compared to E. 
the atomic radius in group 4 this these are group 4 uh, increases down the group because of an added occupied energy level hence d has a smaller atomic radius compared to e compared to e then lastly state and explain observation made when concentrated nitric five acid is added to tannins of copper so concentrated uh, nitric five acid is a powerful oxidizing agent it's a powerful oxidizing agent so when concentrated nitric five acid is added to copper tannins the following happens all the followings are made these are the products now nitrogen four oxide gas is evolved water and copper nitrate are formed so now copper is oxidized to copper 2 nitrate as nitric 5 acid is reduced to water and nitrogen 4 oxide so this is the equation or now you have copper solid we have nitric concentrated nitric 5 acid aqueous reacting to give us copper nitrate give us water and nitrogen for oxide and nitrogen for oxide